Hello everyone. Welcome to Grammar Groove English where you will be learning English grammar, vocabulary and literary text from your syllabus. Today we are going to talk about the poem The Voice of the Rain. It is written by Walt Whitman. This poem is a conversation between the poet and the rain. The poet is talking to the rain. Now what is this conversation about? Let's take a look. And who art thou? said I to the soft falling shower. Here I or the poet is asking, Who art thou? As in who are you? Art as in are and thou means you. So the poet is asking the soft falling shower or the soft rain, Who are you? Which, strange to tell, gave me an answer, as here translated. So I asked the rain a question and in return it gave an answer. Which gave me an answer? Which as in the rain. So the rain gave me an answer and it is quite strange. Strange to tell means it is very unusual or odd. It is quite odd for the rain to speak to the poet. The rain is a non-living being. So for it to answer the poet is indeed very strange. The poet himself thinks that it is strange for the rain to reply to him. And so he translates the strange reply of the rain in the following lines. I am the poem of earth. Said the voice of the rain, Eternal I rise, impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. So this is what the rain is saying, that it is the poem of earth. Eternal I rise, impalpable, out of the land and the bottomless sea. Eternal as in endless, so it rises endlessly out of the land and the sea in the form of vapour and it rises in an impalpable manner. Impalpable means something that cannot be touched. Of course, one cannot touch or feel vapour with his hands, therefore it is impalpable. Upward to heaven, whence vaguely formed, altogether changed and yet the same. So the rain rises upwards. Upwards to heaven means towards the sky. There it changes its form. Vague means unclear or obscure. Something that doesn't have a definite shape. Okay, so vaguely formed means vague or unclear formation of clouds because clouds don't have a definite shape and in this process it is altogether changed. The vapour changes into clouds so its form is totally changed but by nature it is the same. Water, vapour or cloud all three have the same components. I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn. So now the clouds turn into rain and it comes down to lave the drought and provide water. Lave means to wash or bathe. So the rain washes away any sign of dryness. It also washes away the dust and small particles from the earth's surface. And all that in them without me were seeds only, latent and born. And then it says that it gives life to the latent seeds. Latent means hidden or buried. The seeds were buried deep inside the earth, they were unborn and hidden. Without the rain, they would have stayed hidden forever. But thanks to the rainfall, those seeds grow into plants. And forever, by day and night, I give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it. So the rain helps create new life. It gives back life to its own origin, its birthplace, the earth. And it does so day and night. Day and night, it provides life, care, and nourishment to the place from where it originated. It also enhances the beauty of earth and purifies it. For song, issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment, wandering wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. Now this is very important. Here the rain is compared to a song. Okay, the rain is like a song that originates from its birthplace, the earth. Just like a song that is born in the heart of a singer, the rain is born on earth. Songs return to the person who composed them after being heard. Okay, a poet composes a song, that song travels the world, people listen to that song and then it comes back to the poet and they return with love after fulfilling their duty. Their duty is to give joy to the listener, so the songs give joy to the listeners and after that they come back with love. In the same way, the rain travels to fulfill the earth's needs and finally comes back to the place from where it originated. So the rain comes back to the earth with due love. Okay, wrecked or unwrecked. 
whether it is acknowledged or not doesn't matter to the rain it fulfills its duty it nourishes the earth it purifies the earth and so whether people praise the rain or not it doesn't matter the rain doesn't care about it okay it does its job and then comes back duly with love returns it returns to its birthplace with a lot of love the theme of the poem the poem talks about the cycle of birth okay it talks about the eternal journey of the rain from the earth to the sky it shows the role of the rain on earth how it is responsible for creating new life providing nourishment and purification so it nourishes humanity and all the other living beings thus the poem celebrates the beauty and power of nature and its restorative abilities the poem is also an extended metaphor that compares the rain to a poem or a song now let's talk about the poetic devices firstly we have personification to learn the definition of personification check out my previous video the laburnum top there i talk about it in detail here the poet personifies a non living thing the rain as a living thing in the poem i am the poem of earth said the voice of the rain so like a person with a voice the rain shares its story okay so this is personification next we have metaphor it is an indirect comparison between two different things again you can check out my previous video to understand what a metaphor is i am the poem of earth here the rain is being compared to a poem it is an indirect comparison as they aren't outwardly similar to each other the similarity is implied in that they both serve the same purpose they both give joy to people and nourishes them okay this is an implied comparison next we have hyperbole hyperbole is an exaggerated statement and it shouldn't be taken literally bottomless sea is an example of hyperbole it is used to emphasize the depth of the sea but we all know that the sea isn't actually bottomless it is only an exaggeration okay lastly we have imagery in literature it is a visual description of something soft falling shower is an imagery when we read the phrase soft falling shower we imagine the soft pitter patter of the rain drops so therefore it is creating an imagery so that's all for today if you have any more queries regarding this poem ask me in the comments i'll try to clear your doubts and to score good marks always read your text thoroughly don't just read summaries okay trust me if you don't skip the text you will be able to answer all the questions from it in your exams if you'd like to see more such videos subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified thank you for tuning in and i'll see you soon till then take care